so here is the first question uh, with this you know um i'm going to show you how to do this a little bit differently um the, the thing is you want to have the y's on one side and you want to have the numbers without variables on the other side so what you want to do here you want to bring the 3y to this side and you want to bring the negative 2 to this side i know they teach you add 2 to both sides and then minus 3y both sides but what i'm going to show you is that you could you could do this simultaneously in very quick so when you're moving the 3y to this side, what you do, you always change the sign. If you move something to the other side of the equal sign, if it's positive in the front, you subtract it. If it's, if it's minus here, then you add it. So look at this. So simultaneously, I'm going to go 5y minus 3y. I brought the 3y to this side. I change it to minus equals the 4 is still on the right hand side of the equal sign. I'm going to bring the negative 2 to the side, changes to plus. Eventually, that's what you should be doing. Uh, you, you know, all this, so adding two to both sides, minusing three y from both sides. Maybe to, to understand it, you could start like this, but eventually you should be able to start moving things a bit faster. So here, what we're going to get, we're going to get two y equals six. Now divide both sides by two, by two, I get y equals three. And the next question is 4x minus 3, 4 in front of that in brackets equals negative 2. So the first thing you need to do here is the property of this distribution is you distribute the 4 into here and to here into the x and the negative 3. So you have 4x minus 12 equals negative 2. Now, again, I need to move that negative 12 to the other side. As I said, just move it to the other side, changes becomes plus instead of minus. And therefore, now we have 4x equals negative 2 plus 12 gives me 10. Divide both sides by 4. I get x because this cancels equals 4 of 10 over 4 reduces to 5 over 2 because 2 goes into 4 twice and goes into 10 five times. Um, next. So here is uh, fractional coefficients. So what I teach my students is um, that you don't have to follow one rule. And what works best for me on, uh, with these questions right here is to get rid of the fractions right away. So to get rid of the fractions, I look for what's the common denominator between the 4 and the 6. Now, 4 doesn't go into the 6, but 6, the multiples of 6 are 12, does the first thing, does 12 go into 4? Yes. So now it means I have to multiply everything by 12. So I'm not doing common denominator, just I'm looking at the common denominator, the least common denominator, because I want to multiply all of this equation by 12. Why am I doing that? I'm doing this because I want to get rid of fractions. I want to get rid of the fractions right away. I don't want them to interfere uh, in, in what I'm doing. But now, how do I multiply 12 into here and inside here and there and inside here. Well, you don't have to multiply it inside here. All you need to do is just multiply the 12 to the three quarters. And that is the same as multiplying it to the whole side in here. Uh, so 12 times three quarters. Now, how do, you, how do you multiply 12 times three quarters? This is a question that I always ask my students to do. And they, they have a hard time doing it without writing things down. Let me tell you something here. Okay, when you multiply a whole number times a fraction, all you need to do, look at this whole number, divide it by the bottom of the fraction. So 12 divided by four is three. So that's what you need to multiply to the top. The three that you got to multiply to the three and here you get nine. Now the four is gone. You still have your two X minus three right there. Now, again, the 12 time you multiply it into the five sixth. Now, Again, when you multiply a whole number times a fraction, all you need to do, just go 12 divided by this six, it gives you two. Then you multiply the two into the five, you get 10, and you have the negative two minus four X. This gets rid of the fractions altogether for you. Remember this, because this you'll be doing it in grade 10 and grade 12, except with, with, not with small equations like this with big equations. If you learn it now, you'll be surprised how much this could help you in the future. So there you go. So um, we're going to continue now. So distribute the 9 into here and to there. You're going to get 18x 
minus 27 equals negative 20 distribution again minus 40 x now again i want to bring everything that has an x to one side and everything that doesn't have an x to the other side so that means i'm going to bring this minus 40 to the left side so i'm going to go 18 x plus 40 x when you move things to the other side you change the sign equals you still have the negative 20 on the right side of the, of the equal sign moving the negative 27 becomes plus 27. As I said, I do it simultaneously. I, I am over that, um, uh, add both to both sides due to the sides. You could do it this way. Trust me on that. You could move things so smoothly and so fast. It's to save you a lot of time. So um, now we have 58 X equals seven. Divide both, both sides by 58 by 58 and x, you cannot reduce that. So x equals seven over 58 for this. Now here's another one with uh, fractional uh, coefficients. Now what, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do the same thing. Find out what the common denominator is, multiply everything by the common denominator. The common denominator is eight. So I'm gonna multiply everything by eight. Now see here, if we look at how many terms we have, we have one term here and one term there. This, we call this as one term and this is a one term. Here, however, you have two terms. See that plus sign here divides this part on the left side into two terms. So we, when we multiply in the eight inside, what we're doing, we have to multiply the eight first to the three. So when you multiply the eight to the three, you get 24 plus Eight times one quarter, that's eight divided by four, which is two times one is two brackets, five X plus three. Multiply the eight into the three eights, eight divided by eight is one. So one times three is three X minus four. Now you see how simple this looks compared to this. I know a lot of students when they see fractions, they kind of freeze and they think, oh my God, but chill, everything is okay now. All right. Um, 24, my brag is there, plus distribute, you get 10x. When you distribute, make sure you distribute them both. Plus six equals distribute again, three x minus 12. Now, even though we have a lot of things, but we're still gonna do the same thing. Bring everything that has an x to the left side and everything that has no x to the right side. Now you could do this simultaneously in one step so you leave the 10 X on the left side of the equal sign, bring the three X to this side, you're gonna change sign. So we're gonna become minus three X equals. You keep the negative 12 on the right side. You're gonna bring the 24 and the six to the right side. We know they have to change sign. So minus 24 minus six. Now 10 X minus three X is seven X. Negative 24 minus six is negative 30 minus 42. Um, so now divide both sides by seven, by seven, X equals negative six. You know what? This is the easiest way of getting rid of fractions really fast and, and making your questions look a lot simpler than what they originally look like in the question. So we finish with these two. I'm going to do a couple more. Um, so here is another two questions. Now the first one here, I'm just gonna distribute the negative nine into the X and the plus three. So negative nine X minus 27. I still have the minus nine X there equals negative three X. Now you have a negative one there. So I'm gonna distribute the negative one into both. So that gives me negative three, negative one times negative X is plus X, the common mistake that students make. They never change the sign of this. Uh, they keep it negative and that would be wrong because you have a negative outside of the brackets. This is a sign changer and then plus eight. Maybe here it's better to um, simplify on both um, sides, the left side and the right side. So um, negative nine minus nine, these are like terms right here. So that's minus 18 X. You still have the minus 27 equals, these are like terms. And these are like terms right here. So negative three X plus X is negative two X. Negative three plus eight is plus five. 
Now again, I'm going to bring all the access to one side and I bring the numbers to the other side with the numbers that we, that we don't have access with them. So neg negative 18 axis stays on the left side. You bring the negative 2x to the left side, it becomes plus 2x equals, I still have the 5 on the right hand side and bring in the negative 27 to the right side and it becomes plus because it's minus on the left side. So when it goes to the right side, it becomes plus. Now, simultaneously, we did that. Um, negative 18x plus 2x is negative 16x equals 5 plus 27 is 32. Um, now, divide both sides by negative 16 by negative 16. You get x equals negative 2. Um, now, this one here, bit easier, so 6w minus 12, distribute the 6 in both, the w and minus 2, the distribution property, equals 3w. Now, plus 2 has to be distributed in both, plus 2w, plus 2. Um, let's collect like terms first, 6w minus 12 equals 3w plus 5w, that's 3w plus 2w, that's 5w plus 2. Now, I'm going to bring the w's to this side, numbers without any variables to the right side. So 6w minus 5w, change the sign. We have the two still on the right side, bring the negative 12 to the other side, becomes plus 12. Now w equals 24. Yeah. Also, you know, you could always go and double check that the answer works, you know, just in case you made a mistake. And therefore you plug in the w, which is the 24 for all the w's in here and see if the left side equal the right side. So six times 24 minus two equals three times 24 plus two times 24 plus one. So there we go. Let's see if the left side equal the right side. This becomes six times 22. And this three times four is 12, three times two is there. So that's 72 plus that's 25 in there times two is 50. Now this six times 22, you get 12, six times 132 equals here. Uh, hold on a second. Therefore, 6w minus 5w gives you w, 1w. So now 6w minus 5w will give you 1w equals 2 plus 12 is 14. Now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to double check if my answer works. So now just plug in the 14 for all the w's here. So we're going to get 6, 14 minus 2 equals 3 times 14. plus two times 14 plus one. Now 14 minus two is 12, six times 12 will be 72 equals three times 14. That's oh, three times 42 plus, that's 15, Four, 14 plus one is 15, 15 plus two. 15, 15 times two is 30. Now 72 on the left side and 42 plus 30 is 72. It works and it's checked. So this is how you always check your answer. You remember when I got 24, somehow I, I said two plus 12 is 24. When I tested it, it didn't, the left side wouldn't equal the right side. So you know, you made a mistake. So I went back, looked at it. I know it's 14, the answer. So now when I plug the 14 in, it checked the left side equals the right side. One more, I'm gonna do one more question involves inequalities with the algebra. So one more. So there we go, seven brackets, three minus two X is less than or equal to negative two times seven plus two X. They want you to solve this inequality and then graph it on a number line. So the same thing, they treat this as if it was an equal sign. 
So when you move things around and stuff, you just think of this as an equal sign. So the dis distributive property, so I'm gonna go seven times three is 21 minus 14 X is less than or equal to negative 14 minus four X distributive property. Now I'm gonna move the negative four X to this side. I'm gonna move the 21 to this side. So I keep the negative 14 X on the left side of the inequality sign, moving the negative four X to the right, to the left side, it becomes plus four X. Simultaneously, again, I do things simultaneously. Negative 14, move the 21 to this side, becomes minus 21 because it was positive here. So now negative 10 X is less than or equal. That gives me five, 35, negative 35. So now divide both sides by negative 10. And here is the trick, or here is the catch. Anytime you you're solving for x, if you end up dividing by a negative number, this inequality sign here, it changes direction. So it flips, it becomes like this. So instead of facing uh, this way, now it faces that way. Um, so now I get x. This reduces to a positive answer. 5 goes into 35 seven times, and 5 goes into 10 twice. This is the answer. If you want to draw this on a number line, here's your number line. This is the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, positive, negative. This is your 0 right here. OK. 7 over 2 is about 3.5. So 1, 2, 3, 3.5 is somewhere here. So what you do, you put uh, a dot there. It's, it's a closed circle, not an open circle. If, there's, if there was no equal sign with an equality sign, you'll do this instead. But since there is an equal sign, you dot, you have your closed circle right there, right, right there. And then it's greater than or equal to 7 over 2. So greater than is shading this way. So that's your solution right here for this question. Okay. Again, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends so they could benefit. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.